LDP, RSVP, and segment routing. Choose one of them and why. So let's compare them first. LDP came around as stateless addition to IGP to distribute labels or to distribute binding. So every prefix needs binding in order to resolve IP destination to a label, right? So what's very straightforward, pretty hacky protocol if you ask me, still a lot of issues after 15 years in the field. However, reasonably simple to deploy. Back then, there were actually two protocols competing for traffic engineering, CRLDP and RCPT. So we are not talking about RCP, we are talking about RCPT a little bit here. And also, let me clarify, so, CRLDP, constraint-based LDP he's talking about. Yeah, which constraints stand for not using shortest path, computing a path that deviates from the shortest path. Meaning you take some constraints into consideration and you compute the path of the traffic engineer. So CRLDP lost somewhat technological, somewhat political battle. But the point being, we ended up with two solutions. Completely connectionless, just follow SPF, provides label binding, LDP that runs on top of your IGP, and RSVP that is connection-oriented. It kind of it mimics a connection because it's from head end to tail end and it's in-band signal. So you have RSVP flow that goes from head end to tail end and back. It does research reservation, signals the labels it's being allocated locally. So it's connection oriented. Even so, it's not hard guaranteed. It provides soft guarantee to resource allocation. So if you reserve 10 gig of bands, it doesn't mean that it's actually provided. You need additional means on the device to actually physically computer policers or any other such means as, to guarantee the structure. Such as the circle to service. Yeah. So if we look at segment routing, it kind of inherits properties of both. It's completely stateless. So there's no state on intermediate nodes. It does provide us ability to do traffic engineering, but not in band like RCP. All the computations are done by a logically centralized controller. So since controller knows the topology, all the attributes, bandwidth available. So all this information is signaled by IGP today and BGPLS, which stands for BGP link state. It's an extension to BGP to signal information caught in IGPs to a controller. So now since controller has all the information, it can actually build logical tunnels and then signal them back to head end to instantiate them. Couple things let me add here. BGPLS is not also just carrying from the network the topology information from the link state protocols, but also traffic engineering specific informations might be like SRLG, link coloring, admin groups, etc. But this is important to understand. IGP can still run between the controller and the network, but BGPLS, you can think that you are redistributing all this topology information plus traffic engineering information into BGP and your BGP speaking router probably like the route reflector and the controller speaking BGP. So to kind of explain why we introduced BGPLS, uh, traditionally, all traffic engineering information in IGPs carried in APEC LSA LSPs. The scope of such LSA LSP is level or an area. So the problem in this case, obviously, you need to create a logical tunnel from an IGP level or area to the controller once per ABR, which doesn't scale, which painful, requires geo tunneling and all the stuff. What if you have just flat design, not hierarchical design? then you could use IGP potentially. So, but in this case, still BGP-LS wouldn't provide scalability compared to IGP? So BGP is better in a way it doesn't flood, right? Yeah. When you need to, BGP only sends incremental updates. And this will come up in LSDR discussion yep. as to why we are doing it, yeah. right? I would say BGP provide, provides much better API to interact with controllers than IGP. And this is pretty much why. But you are still not saying, maybe you said flooding and it's equal to scalability as well. So scalability is on one side, BGP, yeah, LS so versus IGP. If you have controller passively participating in your network, you flood every time there's a change, right? So your controller is constantly being bumped by new information. Yeah. BGP in this case uh, also scalable. BGP, LS, address family will be scalable yes. compared to IGP. There's some negative plus point APA. because what you just have to do, you are translating information in IGP, not on site, encoding into BGP. Mm -hmm. And if you are not doing it correctly, and I've seen the early implementations of this, uh, you get into racing conditions, uh, especially in SAS case, it's really complex technology to do. But when implemented, it provides much cleaner. So not to forget, BGP supports policies, while IGPs don't, right? 
So it gives you ability to filter information, and it's very cleanly done by using not link and prefix attributes. So in general, it's much easier to parse and rebuild your topology as a controller. And in fact, if you want to filter something on IGPs or SPF ISAs, you need to have hierarchical design, and hierarchical, hierarchical design, again, is losing to BGPLS. Yeah, okay. Absolutely, because as you all know, uh, you're only allowed to filter on boundaries in IGPs. In, in LinkedIn LGPs. So, but um, oh, we, now, the we now define LDP, what RSPP was doing, and SR getting benefits from both, let's say. Uh, one thing first, CRLDP, by the way, CR, uh, of course, it's now deprecated, but CRLDP was not reserving bandwidth, right? It was stateless also. It was providing ability to traffic engineering, so choose the path that is not not bandwidth reservation like RSVP. It was not. No. Yeah. Okay. But just one word: SR, LDP, RSVP. Which one? So Can if you that. deploy today, you should deploy certain routing using PLS data plane. There's absolutely no reason to do LDP. Uh, RSVP. I can imagine there could be some use cases. For example, segment routing, since it removed all the states from the network, doesn't give you ability to do point to multi point. There's some work going on, but it's still to be done. So like multicast, so for example, point to multipoint, like multicast. Point to multipoint, so if you require multipoint transport with strict guarantees and all the beauty, that kind of predictability that RCP gives you, providing almost like a physical alike path, I can imagine RCP to be deployed. Actually, big but question. RCP together with certain charge. Now, big question is coming. Okay, you say if you are deploying today, probably you are saying for Greenfield, go with SR. What about already deployed LDP or RSVP network? Do you think that there might be always cases, but what would be the biggest case for us to migrate to SR from LDP or RSVP? So, the question how do you use RSVPT? Most networks don't really do traffic engineering. What they use RCPT for is fast reroute. Second Especially, I see provider. link protection also with yeah. the fast reroute. Mostly link protection because links are most frequently failing compared to not failure. Yeah. From protection perspective, segment routing gives you the ability to use topology independent LFA, loop free alternative, that gives you almost in all cases 100% coverage. It gives you the ability to do link protection, it gives you ability to provide not protection. And actually... And it has nice properties compared to regular LFA as well as remote LFA. Yeah, also very important point there. RSVPT also can provide 100% coverage and it can provide link and not protection. But yeah. TILFA is providing also post-convergence optimal path which RSVPT cannot, cannot guarantee that. And uh, your uh, merge point... I, I would disagree with you because... Yeah. Your post conversion path is your backup LSP. So there's no IGP yeah. conversion site. Yeah, but so post conversion. You, you know exactly where you're going to converge to. But this is my point. Post convergence optimal path, let's say your merge point, right? So merge point might be totally different place that you need to go to that merge point. Then for the destination, maybe you are doing hair pinning to go to destination, which would be suboptimal. And RSVP, we are seeing this one, RSVP FRR, we are seeing this one a lot. In TILFA case, we don't see this. And when they really market about that post-convergence optimal path we provide, we need to understand that merge point might be three, four, five different, four, five hop away. Then you need to go to that point first from PLR. And after that, from merge point to destination, you might be doing some hair pinning. So, some interfaces might be passed through a couple times. This might be also, of course, bandwidth consumption issue on those links for unnecessary consumption. That's why I said that. What do you think? It's an interesting point because traditionally IPFRR, so LFA, remote LFA, direct LFA, they don't consider availability of resources. So you would just run something like, uh, for LFA, you'll just run number of algorithms to find all the loop-free paths available that are worse than your primary, but still look free and available. It doesn't mean the path is actually available from resource perspective. The interface path my go through could be overloaded. So there are many different things you need to take into consideration and think whether you are trying to protect link, not or actually resources. If you are thinking about resource and guaranteed protection, for example, you are delivering some critical service. Mm -hmm. You might start thinking about doing path protection. Your backup path is fully pre-computed and pre-instantiated prior to the failure and controller 
really monitors use of resources and if needed, recomputes the better path. Pet protection, by the way, let me just introduce pet protection for the audience. So link protection and node protection we generally consider for the local protection mechanisms. So pet protection though is done by the head end and we have always one-to-one -one primary. So protection and protected pets, primary and backup pets, Jeff talking about. Any other point for this question? So let, otherwise let's move on to it. Yeah, so it's important to understand what you are trying to protect and technology to implement because in our CPT case, backup tunnel could reserve resources and be as good as your primary. And segment routing case, it's really complex because you are not on the network. It's a controller that looking after resources or the changes in the network. So potentially there's some delta in time between allocation of resources and instantiation of resources. But so this... if you're really looking at the past protection, you really need to understand what you are doing. This can go very deep level, actually, but yeah. like uh, I want to say, okay, ingress, different headends, they are not aware of each other. So one headend can reserve bandwidth on one pet. Another also maybe they are selfish router anyway, that it, another guy also will attack to that pet. And there is no coordination between them and centralized controller maybe will find an optimal, you know, okay, I will not allow to you. Then TE priorities will come into the picture. I know that we will discuss that. That's why let's move to the third question. Uh, it's probably a topic for another one hour. Definitely. How definitely. works. Yeah, it is, all the permutations and computations. You know. 